What was the most significant event of the Troubles in Northern Ireland? Many would argue it's Bloody Sunday. Picture this. It's the early 70s, a time of great social and political unrest in Northern Ireland. The region is embroiled in a period known as the Troubles, a three-decade-long conflict characterized by violence, civil rights protests, and political deadlock between the Catholic Nationalists and the Protestant Unionists. At the heart of this turmoil is Bloody Sunday. This event, also known as the Bogside Massacre, occurred on January 30, 1972, in Derry, Northern Ireland. On this day, British soldiers shot and killed 13 unarmed civilians during a protest march organized by the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association. This march was not an isolated incident but rather a boiling point in an escalating tension. The civil rights movement in Northern Ireland had been gaining momentum, advocating for equal rights and an end to discrimination against the Catholic minority. However, the response from the British army and the Protestant majority was often brutal and repressive leading to an increasingly volatile environment. Bloody Sunday was a pivotal moment in the Troubles. Not only was it the highest number of people killed in a shooting incident during the conflict, but it was also the worst mass shooting in Northern Irish history. The event significantly fueled Catholic and Irish nationalist hostility towards the British Army, leading to increased support for the Provisional Irish Republican Army. But Bloody Sunday was more than a tragic event. It was a turning point. It marked a shift in public sentiment and international perception casting a harsh light on the actions of the British Army and the British government. It was a wake-up call, a realization that the troubles were far from over, and that the path to peace would be long and fraught with challenges. Stay with us as we delve deeper into the events of that fateful day. The morning of January 30, 1972, began like any other Sunday in Derry, Northern Ireland, but it was far from ordinary. The streets were buzzing with a palpable tension, a sense of anticipation that was as thick as the winter fog that clung to the city. The Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association had planned a protest march, a peaceful demonstration against the policy of internment without trial that had been imposed by the British government. The city woke early that day, the usual quiet of a Sunday morning shattered by the sounds of preparation. People moved with purpose, their breath misting in the cold air as they gathered placards and banners, their messages of protest stark against the dull gray of the morning. The atmosphere was charged, a heady mix of fear, defiance, and hope. The protesters knew the risks. They were well aware of the British Army's presence in their city, their tanks and armored vehicles a constant reminder of the power they wielded. Yet they chose to march. They chose to raise their voices, to demand their rights, to stand up against injustice. As the city stirred, the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association was busy coordinating the march. They had planned the route carefully, mindful of the need to avoid confrontation with the British Army. They issued instructions to the protesters, urging them to remain peaceful, to stay calm. There was a sense of unity, a collective strength that reverberated through the crowd. They were people from all walks of life, students, workers, mothers, fathers, children, all united in their quest for justice. The morning wore on, the skies overhead a dull gray, the air heavy with anticipation. The protesters began to assemble, their numbers swelling as the hour of the march drew closer. The city held its breath, the usual hum of everyday life replaced by an eerie quiet. The protesters stood shoulder to shoulder, their voices rising in chants and songs, their determination unwavering. As they prepared to step forward to march for their rights, there was a sense of camaraderie of shared purpose. They were not just protesters, they were a community, a family. They had come together in the face of adversity, united by a common cause. Their spirits were high, their resolve unshakable. They believed in their cause, in their right to protest, in their power to effect change. But as the clock ticked toward the start of the march, a shadow of uncertainty loomed. There was an undercurrent of anxiety, a nagging doubt that something might go wrong. Yet they chose to march, their steps echoing their determination, their voices ringing out their defiance. Unbeknownst to them, the protesters were marching into a tragedy. As the march began, the air was filled with a sense of determination and solidarity. An amalgamation of voices, each echoing a shared resolve, rose from the streets of Derry. Ordinary citizens, unarmed and united, began their march. Men and women, young and old, they came together with a singular purpose to voice their protest against perceived injustices. The number of participants was immense, a sea of humanity that stretched as far as the eye could see, all marching peacefully. Their intentions were clear and unambiguous. 
They sought not to provoke or incite, but to express their grievances, to demand their rights. Their banners and placards bore testament to their cause. Their voices, steady and resolute, echoed their shared determination. The mood was one of unity and resolve, a collective spirit that refused to be silenced. However, the British soldiers present on the scene painted a stark contrast to this peaceful gathering. They watched with a grim anticipation, their fingers itching on the triggers of their weapons. Their orders were to maintain peace and order, but their presence was an ominous reminder of the volatile situation. It was a tense standoff, the air thick with apprehension and uncertainty. The marchers, however, remained undeterred. Despite the intimidating presence of the soldiers, they continued their march. Their chants, their songs, their cries for justice filled the air, a testament to their unwavering resolve. It was a moment of peaceful defiance, a moment of unity in the face of adversity. But as they say, the calm before the storm is often the most deceptive. And so it was on that fateful day. The march, which had begun as a peaceful demonstration, was about to take a tragic turn. The tension that had been building up was about to explode. The confrontation that everyone had feared was about to become a reality. It was a peaceful protest, until it wasn't. Suddenly, the peaceful protest was shattered by the sound of gunfire. The tranquility of the march, the camaraderie of the crowd, all broken by the harsh, terrifying echo of bullets. From the ranks of the British soldiers, a sudden burst of violence erupted, catching the unarmed protesters off guard. The air, once filled with the sounds of chants and songs, was now punctuated by screams of terror and confusion. The once orderly procession of protesters was thrown into disarray as the crowd began to scatter, desperately trying to escape the unexpected onslaught. Men, women, and even children ran for cover, their faces etched with fear and disbelief. The soldiers, seemingly unfazed by the panic they had caused, continued to fire into the crowd. The chilling sound of their guns echoed through the streets of Derry, a horrifying symphony of violence. Each shot fired added to the growing number of casualties, as the unarmed civilians fell one by one. As the bullets continued to rain down, the protesters scrambled to help the fallen, dragging them to safety, or at least out of the direct line of fire. Each moment of bravery was met with another volley of gunshots, turning the scene into a nightmarish dance of chaos and courage. In the midst of the pandemonium, the true scale of the violence began to emerge. The number of casualties rose with each passing second, the wounded crying out in pain, their pleas for help drowned out by the relentless gunfire. It was a scene of devastation, a stark contrast to the peaceful protest that had begun just a few hours earlier. And then, as suddenly as it had started, the shooting stopped. The deafening silence that followed was broken only by the cries of the wounded and the shocked gasps of the survivors. The once bustling streets of Derry were now a battlefield, the victims of the shooting scattered around like forgotten casualties of war. In just a few moments the scene had transformed into chaos. The peaceful protest, meant to be a stand for civil rights, had turned into a massacre. The echoes of the gunfire still hung in the air, a grim reminder of the violence that had just taken place. The day that had begun with hope and unity had ended in bloodshed and horror, and the city of Derry, like its people, would never be the same again. When the smoke cleared, the true extent of the tragedy became apparent. The echoes of gunfire had barely faded when the reality of what had just transpired began to sink in. As the dust settled on that cold January afternoon, the streets of Derry, Northern Ireland were painted with the grim aftermath of a protest turned bloodbath. Unarmed civilians lay scattered across the battleground, their hopes for a peaceful march brutally extinguished. Thirteen lives were lost that day. Thirteen sons, brothers and fathers, gunned down in broad daylight. Their only crime? Demanding the civil rights they were entitled to. The images of their lifeless bodies strewn across the pavement served as a chilling testament to the cost of their struggle. But it wasn't just the deceased who bore the brunt of the violence. Twenty more were injured, some critically, their lives forever marred by the horrors they had witnessed and endured. The survivors, left to grapple with the physical and emotional scars of that fateful day, were a living testament to the brutality of the incident. The response of the British Army in the immediate aftermath was one of denial and deflection. Despite the glaring evidence and countless eyewitness accounts, they maintained that their soldiers had acted in self-defense, responding to perceived threats from the protesters. This narrative, however, sharply contrasted with the reality on the ground. The protesters were unarmed, their intentions peaceful, their demands lawful. In the face of such denial, 
the survivors and the families of the victims were left with a profound sense of injustice. Their grief was compounded by the realization that their loved ones had not only been unjustly killed, but were now being painted as the aggressors. This narrative, spun by the very institution responsible for their suffering, only served to deepen their wounds. As the world watched in shock and disbelief, the British Army's actions on that day were widely condemned. The international community demanded answers and accountability. The global media shone a spotlight on the incident, bringing the plight of the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association to the forefront of global consciousness. Bloody Sunday had claimed 13 lives, but its impact was far from over. The aftermath of the shooting marked a turning point in the troubles, igniting a wave of outrage and resentment that would fuel the conflict for years to come. In the hearts and minds of the survivors, the families of the victims, and the broader Irish community, the memory of Bloody Sunday would forever serve as a stark reminder of the heavy price of their struggle for civil rights. In the wake of the tragedy, the Widgery Tribunal was set up to investigate. It was named after its chairman, Lord Chief Justice Widgery, and its purpose was to examine what exactly had transpired on that fateful day in January 1972, known as Bloody Sunday. The tribunal was swift, and its report was published in the April of the same year. The findings, however, were met with widespread criticism. The tribunal largely exonerated the British soldiers involved in the shooting, stating that they had been fired upon first and had only returned fire in response. It suggested that some of the victims may have been carrying weapons, despite there being no substantial evidence to back up this claim. This conclusion was met with shock and disbelief, especially among the families of the victims and the Irish nationalist community. They felt the tribunal had been a whitewash, a hasty attempt to absolve the British army of any significant blame. Critics argued that the tribunal had failed to consider several important pieces of evidence, including eyewitness accounts and photographic material, which painted a different picture of the events of that day. The findings of the Widgery Tribunal only served to inflame tensions further. The Irish nationalist community, already deeply mistrustful of the British army, felt betrayed. The perception that the British government was unwilling to hold its soldiers to account for their actions deepened this mistrust and fueled resentment. Public reaction to the tribunal was varied. While some accepted its findings, others were deeply skeptical. There were protests and calls for a new investigation, one that would thoroughly examine all the evidence and provide a more accurate account of what had occurred on Bloody Sunday. The controversy surrounding the Widgery Tribunal was not just confined to Northern Ireland or the Republic of Ireland. It garnered international attention, and many foreign observers were critical of its findings. They felt it had failed to deliver justice and had only served to exacerbate an already volatile situation. Despite the tribunal's findings, many felt that justice had not been served. The story of Bloody Sunday and its aftermath would continue to unfold over the decades that followed, leading to a renewed investigation years later known as the Savile Inquiry. But that's a tale for another time. It would take nearly four decades for a more thorough investigation to take place. As the echoes of the Widgery Tribunal's controversial findings faded into history, the Savile Inquiry rose to undertake a comprehensive examination of the tragic events of Bloody Sunday. The Savile Inquiry, named after its chairman, Lord Savile of Newdigate, was established in January 1998. It was commissioned by then Prime Minister Tony Blair, who recognized a need to reevaluate the events of that fateful day in Derry, Northern Ireland. The inquiry was mandated to leave no stone unturned, and it would take 12 long years to complete its work. Unlike the Widgery Tribunal, the Savile Inquiry was not confined by a narrow scope. It took into account the testimonies of hundreds of witnesses, both civilian and military. It sifted through thousands of photographs, video recordings, and official documents. It even included first-hand accounts from the soldiers involved in the shootings, something that the Widgery Tribunal had notably lacked. What the Savile Inquiry uncovered was startling. It found that none of the victims posed a threat of causing death or serious injury. It found that some of the victims were shot while trying to flee, while others were shot while attempting to help the wounded. It found that the soldiers had lost control, firing indiscriminately into the crowd of protesters. In essence, it found that the Widgery Tribunal's conclusions were fundamentally flawed. The Savile Inquiry did not merely contradict the Widgery Tribunal, it refuted it. It laid bare the harsh truth that the British soldiers had been responsible for the unjustified killing of 13 unarmed civilians on Bloody Sunday. 
In stark contrast to the Widgery Tribunal, it placed the blame squarely on the shoulders of the British Army. The impact of the Savile Inquiry was profound. It led to a public apology from the British Prime Minister David Cameron in June 2010. It also led to the prosecution of Soldier F, one of the soldiers involved in the shootings, although the charges were later dropped. The Seville inquiry confirmed what many had suspected, the killings were unjustified. It was a belated but significant acknowledgement of the truth, a truth that had been obscured for too long. The Savile inquiry, through its painstaking and meticulous investigation, brought a measure of justice to the victims of Bloody Sunday and their families. It served as a powerful reminder of the importance of truth and accountability, even when faced with the most painful of histories. Bloody Sunday left a lasting mark on Northern Ireland and the world. This chilling event, which unfolded on the 30th day of January in the year 1972, became a defining moment in the Troubles, a three-decade conflict that tore at the heart of Northern Ireland. The shockwaves of this horrific day reverberated far beyond the streets of Derry, shaking the foundations of politics and society in Northern Ireland. The shooting of unarmed civilians by British soldiers not only intensified Catholic and Irish nationalist hostility towards the British Army, but it also significantly bolstered support for the Provisional Irish Republican Army. The event marked a turning point, shifting the Troubles into a darker, more violent phase. In the political landscape, the impact of Bloody Sunday was profound. It heightened the division between Catholic nationalists who sought a united Ireland and Protestant Unionists who wanted Northern Ireland to remain a part of the United Kingdom. This heightened tension made peace negotiations more challenging, further prolonging the conflict. Public sentiment was also deeply affected by Bloody Sunday. The massacre sparked outrage, both locally and internationally. The sight of British soldiers firing on unarmed civilians shattered trust and widened the gulf between the people of Northern Ireland and the British government. This mistrust persisted, and even today, many years after the event, its echoes can still be heard. The struggle for justice by the victims' families has been a long and arduous journey. Despite the Widgery Tribunal's initial exoneration of the soldiers involved, the families never gave up their fight for truth and accountability. It was not until the Savile Inquiry, almost four decades later, that a more thorough investigation concluded the killings were unjustified. Yet, even with this finding, justice remains elusive. Charges against an ex-paratrooper were dropped in 2021, leaving the victims' families still yearning for a sense of closure. Unresolved issues surrounding Bloody Sunday continue to cast a long shadow over Northern Ireland. Concerns persist over potential amnesty legislation that could prevent prosecutions for troubles-related crimes, stirring fears among victims' families that true justice may never be achieved. Additionally, the impact of Brexit on the Good Friday Agreement, a key peace accord for Northern Ireland, adds another layer of uncertainty to the legacy of Bloody Sunday. Bloody Sunday is a stark reminder of the cost of conflict and the long road to justice. It's a grim chapter in history that underscores the need for accountability, reconciliation, and the preservation of peace. As we remember the lives lost in the enduring struggle for justice, let us also remember the importance of learning from our past to build a more peaceful future. From the morning of the protest to the struggle for justice, Bloody Sunday remains a significant event in Northern Ireland's history. This tragic day, marked by the brutal killing of 13 unarmed civilians by British soldiers, is etched deeply into the historical narrative of the region. It began as a peaceful protest march, organized by the Northern Ireland Civil Rights Association. But the calm of the morning was shattered when British soldiers opened fire, transforming the streets of Derry into a scene of chaos and bloodshed. The toll was heavy, 13 lives lost, a community in mourning, and a nation in shock. The immediate aftermath witnessed a desperate scramble for accountability, culminating in the Widgery Tribunal. However, the Tribunal's conclusions, largely exonerating the soldiers involved, sparked widespread outrage and only served to deepen the wounds inflicted on that fateful day. It was not until the Savile Inquiry, almost four decades later, that the truth of Bloody Sunday was finally acknowledged. The inquiry concluded that the killings were unjustified, marking a significant, albeit delayed, step towards justice. Bloody Sunday is more than just a dark day in Northern Ireland's past. It's a stark reminder of the brutal realities of the Troubles, a period marked by sectarian conflict and political unrest. The echoes of Bloody Sunday continue to reverberate even today, shaping the discourse around civil rights, justice and reconciliation. As we reflect on the events of Bloody Sunday, it's crucial to remember not just the tragedy, 
but also the resilience of those who continue to seek justice and truth. Their struggle is a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity, a beacon of hope amidst the darkest of times. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, History Facts, for more informative videos like this one.